So, jetzt sind wir nochmal zurückgefahren zum Warehouse und äh, ich habe einen Look so lang gedrängelt, dass man sagt, wo der TTRS Ladeluftkühler ist. Dass er jetzt rausgeholt hat, ihr seht schon, das Backel ist riesig groß. Tada! Look how tall are you? Six foot three. Okay, so close to two meters. And what? 20 stone? <laughs> Doesn't matter. But you are big this is, or high. Yeah. And uh, the package is also high. Und man sieht es, sauber verpackt. Ähm, nicht nur außen, sondern auch innen. Wir haben Formschaum, der eingebracht wird, damit natürlich der Lalleluftkühler ganz bleibt. Und da ist das kleine Stück. Wir haben Throttle and Charge Pipe Kit. Und zwar, das ist die Seiten vom Turbo Outlet. Das ist die Seiten vom Lalleluftkühler zur Drosselklappen. Und da Jetzt, jetzt. Nur mal, it's ceramic coated, yeah? Uh, no, just powder coated. This just powder coated, yeah. okay. Also, pulverbeschichtetes Rohr mit äh, Wassermethanolanschluss, vielleicht für den einen oder anderen interessant. Ähm, und wer den TTRS RS3 Lolliluftstrang kennt, der weiß, es ist serienmäßig da so ein richtiger Knick drin. Also, Normal ist da ein Knick drin fürs DSG, dass man das Rohr nochmal festschraubt. Den haben wir eliminiert, somit haben wir deutlich mehr Flow. Um, what do you think about the flow on those charge pipe kits? Um, I think what it does is just remove uh, that smaller bit of restriction that's left uh, within the stock pipes. Some of the, the way they do their bends, what we've tried to do is relax the radius on the bends just to try and allow a slightly sort of more direct route uh, for, for the, the airflow to get to the throttle body really. Um, there, was, there wasn't huge room to be able to expand them in terms of size massively. It was more about, like I say, relaxing the bends, the radius, and just trying to make it a little bit more direct, uh, smoother airflow path. Okay, yeah, I think I, could, uh, I, I did feel it on the car because it runs a lot smoother on park throttle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just, yeah, you know, like airflow can get so turbulent very, very quickly if it hits a, the wrong type of bend or the wrong type of ridge within the pipe. Um, so just by removing that, it just allows it, you know, the, the flow to keep going. Also, um, es geht nicht nur darum, dass man den äh, Durchmesser größer macht von den ganzen Sachen, sondern es ist einfach darum gegangen, äh, Radien weicher zu machen, dass man den Cut eben rausbringt aus dem Rohr. Und äh, man merkt auch, oder ich habe es gemerkt in meinem TTRS, dass das Auto deutlich besser anspricht und das einfach im Teillastbereich schöner fährt insgesamt. Perfekt. So, uh, you got the silicon step inside of the hoses? Yeah, the hoses have the silicon step. Yeah. Also, man nimmt das Ganze ernst, man sieht schon, ähm, da ist wieder Stoßkanten optimiert das ganze Teil drin, ähm, nicht einfach bloß draufgeschraubt, das macht natürlich auch nochmal was aus. So, there are a lot of small things you need to take care about to get a cool working product about it. Yeah, I mean these are the smaller details that I think separate Revo from a lot of other products out there. Uh, we could have made the hoses without the step, um, but you would have been left with the potential for some more turbulent airflow. And by us doing this kit, the whole point is to remove as much as possible. So these steps have been designed to work in conjunction with the size of the aluminium pipe here and then with the throttle body. So it allows for a nice smooth transition constantly. Um, just those little things, they just all sort of add up amongst the whole kit to be able to give you the best possible kit you can have. Cool, perfect. So let's show See us the big one. Forward? Yeah, the big one. There she is. Wow. She's a beast. She's a beast. Look at this. What's the main difference between the Revo intercooler and uh, most of the other intercoolers we got in the aftermarket? Um, I think more than anything, what comes, what generally separates us and why we see usually that little bit extra better cooling in terms of intake temps for cars, it probably comes down to the fin design. Um, okay. 
you know, we discussed briefly on the RS3 cooler as well. Our fin design is quite unique to us in how we, we've designed our own. We haven't just taken an off-the-shelf part um, or an off-the-shelf core uh, from somebody else and just fitted it to end tanks that we've designed. We've designed everything from the ground up. Every single part of this has been Revo engineered, Revo designed. Cool. Uh, it's is quasi alles nicht uh, einfach dem Zufall überlassen, sondern es ist wirklich jedes Teil bei Revo entwickelt worden und auch für Revo und für die Ansprüche, die es gehabt haben. Das heißt, es ist einfach insgesamt das Paket entwickelt und da geht es einfach nicht darum, nur irgendwas zum Nehmen zusammenzuschustern, sondern es ist von Null weg angeschaut worden. Zum Beispiel auch ein ganz gutes Ding, die ähm, Breite vom Ladeluftkühler oder auch die Fläche insgesamt von dem Ganzen ist äh, deutlich größer als bei jedem Aftermarket Ladeluftkühler. So the surface is bigger than any other aftermarket intercooler I know. Yeah, I think so. it's about 2000 yeah, and it's, 80. It's, it's substantial. I mean, we went with um, the stepped core. Um, by doing this, it allowed us to, uh, to obviously increase the volume size. We're limited with the, the space in front of, um, from the crash bar century to the RS, the TTRS bumper. So that was a limitation. So we had to try and see how we could create more volume and working clever with the space we had. So taking almost uh, the stock into cooler size and increasing that straight away. And then by redoing the crash bar and building the crash bar into our cooler, we were then able to increase it by an extra 50% just through the top here. Um, we buy completely OE Audi crash bars, uh, which are then fabricated into our cast end tanks. You can see all nicely gusset welded, um, stronger than the OE crash bar at this point, I probably think, um, <laughs> in how it's done. But they're built onto our nice uh, cast flowed end tanks and in terms of what you have, and then our, our, our nice two fin core that we have. So, uh, as I know, you've tested the intercooler pretty well. There was a smaller um, ones you have tested. That's why my intercooler gets cut it into half. It, it, yeah, yeah. So we, were, we were trying lots of different variations when we were doing the design. We wanted to see if you could just literally make this enough uh, by having just, just this base section, essentially, without the top. Yeah. Um, so we did tests by having this cast and then we were cutting them up, re-welding them back together here um, and then just doing a single piece and then we were doing it with the step core in various fin designs that we had. So we tried a four fin design that we use on some of our other intercoolers, uh, which is where we use a slightly more tighter packed fin on half of the cooler and then a more open one on the other end. And the idea of that is to promote more flow through the end tanks and utilize the entire core. Um, on this one though, uh, just because of the sheer volume of air that we're trying to get through it, we went with just the two fin design. By having just the two fin design on that, it allows us to run the maximum amount of airflow through this without having any pressure drop issues or boost pressure issues as well. Cool. So, it's top notch. I think in terms of flow, I don't think we're going to get much more efficient than what we've got here now. Um, you know, it bolts up to the car nicely. It's the first time we've done something with a crash bar integrated into the cooler. Usually everything we do is always very OE plug and play. Um, unfortunately on this though, to be efficient and to actually make a cooler that works, we had to sort of delve into the crash bar route this time. Uh, but I think the way that we've done it, uh, we've taken every safety precaution in terms of extra gussets in the way we've rebuilt the, the cooler itself so we don't lose any safety aspects as well. Uh, which is obviously a very important thing for us. Yes. But yet we get a really, really efficient cooler that I think looks good once it's in situ. You've tested it, you've seen the benefit you can have over- Oh yeah. Over, over, over the OE performance and then other, other competition coolers on the market as well. Right, right. Also, dieses hübsche Stück, also nicht ein Look, sondern den Luft, Luftkühler, um, wird es geben ab. The release is soon. Uh, yeah, within the next month, hopefully. So, February. Yep. Okay. That's quick. Um, also, Lolliluftkühler mit Throttle and Charge Pipes wird's geben ab Februar. Ich habe auch schon den einen oder anderen auf der Liste, den ich anrufen werde deswegen. Im Vergleich zum, zu den Mitbewerbern werden wir preislich gleich bleiben. Das heißt, den Lolliluftkühler gibt es so nur mit Boost Pipe Kit. So, um, it's only available 
the intercooler with the ch throttle and charge pipe kit. Yeah, so it comes it's not as a it, single approved. No, it all comes as a complete kit because that's what we feel is what the car benefits from. Um, I don't think there's any point in having the boost pipe kit without the intercooler and vice versa. You need them both at the same time to benefit. Um, in the way that that's been designed and the way that the RS3 coil was designed, they've been designed to work in conjunction with those pipes. Perfect. Cool. So, everything to say? I think we're good, but you know, buy one, get it installed on the car, get some cool airflow <laughs> and make extra power. Yes, we will do. Super. Also, you have this cat. Nullius Kühler gibt es nur mit Throttle and Charge Pipes, weil einfach das ganze Ding an sich perfekt arbeitet und die vielleicht ein oder anderen Pferde, die man noch machen können, oder die ein oder andere Verbesserung insgesamt auch mit dem gesamten Kit kommt. Thank you very much, Luke, Thank you. again. And uh, yeah, next time hopefully we see us in Germany. Again. Exactly. Doing some more testing. All right. <laughs>